Thank you all for sticking around for this late show. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Uh, we're thrilled to be here at Carnegie, and we're thrilled that you're here sharing this experience with us. I want to thank everyone at Carnegie for organizing this workshop. It's been amazing, and I really want to thank the Kronos Quartet. This whole week, you've been so inspiring, and for our whole lives, you've been inspiring us. The very first album I ever bought of a string quartet was Kronos Quartet's recording of Black Angels. And I remember putting it on in my grandma's car. And all of a sudden, it, tur it turned on. And there are these moments, you know, they're sort of whispering in German. And it's wild. And I'd never heard music like that before. And I knew in that instant that I had to play music like that. And I had to do it in a string quartet. And years later, Doug and Ty and I attended a festival in Italy. And while there, uh, Doug and I were in a quartet playing Philip Glass String Quartet Number no. 3. And it was only possible for us to play that quartet because Hank snuck a copy to our violist at the time. And while there, Doug was like, hey, do you want to play in a contemporary string quartet with me? And I was like, man, you have no idea. I wanted to do that since I was 16. <laughs> and uh, we met our colleagues, Taya and Otis, at the Conservatory of Music in San Francisco, where we're based. And one day, Doug had this brilliant idea to call us Friction. And I thought it was the perfect name. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to start with a piece by Lasana, Fode Lasana Diabate. And, you know, a long time ago, I'd never heard Black Angels. I'd never heard music like it before. And up until about a month ago, I had never heard a quartet by a composer from Mali. And it blew my mind in a totally different way than Black Angels, but still in a really cool way. So I hope that this piece blows your mind in a different way because it shows something that a quartet can do that's totally different from Black Angels or Beethoven.
Thank you very much. As you can see, Kevin and I like to switch because we can't stand the thought of actually playing first on every piece of music. <laughs> so, first of all, I'm going to try to keep it brief. I'm not very good at it, but um, I'd like to thank Ligeti and Argus Quartets. Listening in the, to them this whole week has been truly inspiring. I'd also like to say that this project started by Kronos and Carnegie is amazing in many different ways and one of the reasons why I'm attracted to this project is that I know within five years time we're going to have new pieces that we can play from all over the globe and all different cultures and that's really valuable for any quartet and especially young quartets to be able to play music that's not just Western classical music or even Western classical old music but music from everywhere. And I find that really amazing. Um, I'd like to just quickly talk about the next three movements we're going to play shortly. I know you guys have program notes with lots of descriptions, but maybe I can tell you what it means to us. Um, the first piece we're going to play is Spectral Sunrise from Garth Knox's Satellites. And it, it was amazing working with him on this movement in particular because you could see him describing his vision of the piece, and there would be this twinkle in his eye, and you knew exactly what he was talking about. His music seems very cinematic to me, and especially this movement. It's almost like he took a cinematic experience of what it would be like to be in space and see the brightest sunrise and the darkest night, and see many of those in one day. And, and he translated that into a sonic environment. I find that very amazing. So we really love this movement in particular. And after that, we're going to play Wu Man's Ancient Echo from her four Chinese paintings. And when we first played this movement, at least to me, I didn't hear quote unquote Chinese music or what I thought was Chinese music. It sounded very Western to me, almost European. And I was interested when she told us that it's an ancient Buddhist melody from Western China. To me, it sounds very pan-cultural. At different points, I hear Negro spirituals, I hear Chinese music, I hear Eastern European music. And I think it's amazing that through all this, you can still hear this ancient beauty underneath. The last piece we're going to play is Terry Riley's Good Medicine from his Salome Dances for Peace. And when we first played this piece, we all had varying uh, ideas of what the title Good Medicine meant. If anyone knows California, I'm from Humboldt County, and so maybe to me, being very familiar with hippie culture, I thought it meant smoke and weed. Um, which, you know, it could, but, um, but the more that I got acquainted with the music and the stories behind it, the more I realized that perhaps he wasn't talking about a substance, but a feeling, and that feeling is joy. So I think it would be great if we could lead you on a journey through these cultures, through time, and also leave you feeling very joyful at the end. So we're going to play the next three movements with just very short pauses, and we might get up and switch one more time. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, and I'd ask you to hold your applause until the very end. Thank you.